In the lead-up to the release of the controversial new film adaptation of Snow White, there's been some discussion focused on the political and ideological message intended by the casting. Disney owes much of its wealth and popularity to the legacy it built in early years under Walt Disney, who paid honorable homage to many Germanic folktales such as Snow White. As some feel that the modern remake of this traditional Germanic tale is an insult to a great cultural legacy. But how deep is this folktale and how far back does it really go? Is it just a modern invention or does it have a much more ancient Germanic root? What are the origins of Snow White? Hi friends, I'm Kevin McLean. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and consider supporting me on Patreon, PayPal, or through YouTube Super Stickers. Your support helps me to make videos like this. Much thanks to all of my supporters. The story of Snow White as we know it today was first published by the Grimm brothers in 1812. Jacob and Wilhelm Grimm took an interest in Germanic folklore as they struggled through university as two young men of little means in an age where university was still very much an elite institution. They became fully engaged in the Romanticism movement that swept Europe at that time. There was a swelling desire from among the people to rediscover their ethnic roots and their own native stories and traditions long neglected in favor of Christian ones. They believed that in order to unify the German people, they needed to rediscover their ancient roots and popularize them. They published their first collection of folk tales in 1812, and in that collection was a tale called Sneewit or Sneewitchen, Little Snow White, or as some translations say, Snowdrop, which refers to a fair-complexioned girl with dark hair. There are a number of similar tales and other editions published by the Grimm's, some with the intention to lighten the rather dark nature of the original tale. In their original version, it begins with Snow White's mother, who pricks herself with a needle. Three drops of blood fell on the snow. The red on white looked so beautiful that she thought, if only I had a child as white as snow, as red as blood, and as black as this frame. This exact same sentiment can be found expressed in the 12th century Gaelic tale, The Exile of the Sons of Ushlu, where it says, One day in winter, Derdru's foster father was outside in the snow, flaying a weaned calf for her. Derdru saw a raven drinking the blood on the snow. She said to Leverham, I could love a man with those three colors, hair like a raven, cheeks like blood, and body like snow. Though the genders are reversed, the concept is identical. In both cases, this also leads to disaster caused by jealousy. The mother goes on to have the most beautiful daughter. But when the daughter is seven years old, the mother asks her magic mirror, who is the most beautiful woman in the land? And the mirror responds by saying, Snow White. Filled with jealousy, she determines to have her killed and recruits a huntsman to take her out in the woods, kill her, cut out her lungs and liver so that she can eat them. The important differences from later grim versions and Disney is that it is her own mother who wants to kill her, and even eat her. We might wonder if the eating of the lungs and liver were thought to possess some potent magical properties which might transfer the youth and beauty of Snow White onto her mother. Snow White also appears much younger in this account than in others. The huntsman does not kill her, but returns with the lungs and liver of a boar which convinces the queen she is dead. After stumbling through the woods all day, Snow White finds a house at dusk. She ate the food she found there and slept in the seventh bed. Yet when it was dark, the dwarves returned. They let her stay in exchange for her acting as their housemaid. 
Now, coming upon the house of the dwarves at night after being lost all day in a forest is not an insignificant detail. It originally relates to Snow White's crossing into the other world. In the Welsh myth of Pwyll, he becomes lost in the forest during a hunt and comes across the god Araun, king of the underworld. In the tale of Manawydan, son of Lir, Prideri and Manawydan are lured into an otherworld location after chasing a white boar. The god Essus is shown as a woodsman cutting a tree, and in Gaelic myth, Angus Mac Og appears also as a woodsman carrying an axe. So being brought into the woods by a huntsman, and the slaying of a boar may be related to a very ancient mythical theme of a descent into the underworld inhabited by, among other things, dwarves. That their number relates to seven may relate to the seven days, or rather seven nights. And that she goes to sleep in their home relates to the dwarves' ancient connection with sleep and unconscious. That this also happens at the transition between day and night is also a recurring theme that emphasizes this transitional state. As is common with the mythological conception of dwarves, which goes back to a proto-Germanic origin, they disappear during the day, explained as going to work in the mines, as they were originally thought to dwell in the stone itself, as attested in Norse myth. However, the queen soon learns that the girl is still alive, for her mirror tells her, You, my queen, are fair, it is true. But little Snow White, beyond the Seven Mountains, is a thousand times fairer than you. The story informs us that, because only the Seven Dwarves lived in the Seven Mountains, she knew at once that they must have rescued her. There appears to be a strong association between the mountains and the dwarves themselves. In Norse myth, we are told that when Odin was arranging the world, he set a dwarf under each corner to hold it up, revealing that in origin these beings were far more than their remnants in folklore suggest, for in Norse myth they took on roles which were ascribed to the Titan brothers of Kronos in Greek myth. Also as the Titans, they are linked not only to sustaining the earth from below, but to various states of consciousness. Prometheus, after all, is a brother of Atlas. Now the queen decides to sneak into the realm of the dwarves to kill Snow White, disguising herself by darkening her face, possibly to look like a chthonic spirit. In accord with ancient folkloric norms, she can only gain access to the house if she is allowed in. In this particular version, Snow White is enticed by bodice lace, which her mother, disguised as a darkened old woman, offers her. When she is inside, she tightens the bodice laces of Snow White so tightly that it makes the poor girl pass out and unable to breathe. Assuming she has killed her, the wicked mother departs. When the dwarves return home, they find her lying motionless and unbreathing. They cut free the bodice and then she can breathe again and comes back from death. Now at this point it must be considered that there is a very similar account to this preserved in Old Norse skaldic poetry, that concerning the hero Sigurd, and the Valkyrie identified in that particular account as Sigurdrifa. Sigurd defeated the dwarf turned dragon Fafnir, and from cooking his heart and tasting of it, he learned the language of birds, and heard of a beautiful Valkyrie whom Odin had scorned. She had granted the victory to someone other than Odin had bidden her, and for this he had her struck with a thorn, in some sources called the Thorn of the Dwarf Dane, which put her into an eternal sleep. Sigurd finds a glowing castle in which she lay in slumber, and wakens her by cutting off the chainmail armor, which was bound on her so tightly as if it had grown to her skin. Once he cuts the chainmail from her, just like the dwarves cut the bodice lace from Snow White, 
she awakens from her death sleep. She next tricks her with a comb, which puts her into a death sleep while lodged in her hair. The dwarves come and remove it, and she again revives. Then the evil queen gets her with an apple, poisoning half of it and giving Snow White the poisoned half. This also puts her into a death sleep. The dwarves, unable to revive her this time, build for her a glass coffin, which one dwarf would always guard. The idea of a glass coffin is found in other related stories in Italy, and this particular detail may have developed from either side of the Alps, as there was a heavy Germanic influence in Italy, especially northern Italy, from the migration period through the medieval. Now, one night, a young prince came along looking for shelter in the dwarf's house. He sees Snow White in the coffin and falls in love with her. They agree to give the prince the coffin, and he takes her to his castle where he pines for her constantly. An annoyed servant sits her up in her coffin one day, whacks her on the back for having so befuddled their lord. This causes the apple to come out from her throat, and she comes back to life. The prince marries Snow White and invites the mother to the wedding, and the prince's men grab her and force her to wear red-hot iron shoes and dance until she dies. A very strange death. The original grim folktale of Snow White is clearly compiled from much older source material. Various other tales contain similar or identical elements, which are likely to have originated from the same source. While some propose extremely ancient, 50,000-year-old hypothetical timelines for folktales, my focus is going to be much more modest. Now, there are various parallel tales, and perhaps the most similar is that of Gold Tree and Silver Tree, recorded in Scotland. I don't believe this tale is originally Gaelic, but belongs to either Old English or Old Norse traditions. The mother, Silver Tree, is jealous of her daughter, Gold Tree. Instead of a mirror, it's a trout in a pond, which is asked who is the fairest. The mother vows to eat her daughter's heart and liver, and tries to get her husband, the girl's father, to kill her. He instead marries her to a prince who lives in a land across the sea and brings his wife back the heart and liver of a goat instead. The mother finds out the truth from the fish and sets about to find her daughter to kill her. Gold Tree is locked away in a fortress to keep her safe, but her mother fools her and pokes her in the finger with a splinter or stab, which puts her into a death sleep. She is then sealed away in a room by her husband, as her body does not decay. He marries another woman, who eventually finds Gold Tree sealed away in the room, and takes a stab from her finger, which revives her. Both women agree to be the wives of the prince, and they kill Gold Tree's mother together. Clearly this Scottish tale is one of the same origin as Snow White, but it either originated from an Old English myth or Old Norse one. Though there are no dwarves, there is an otherworld connotation. The prince to whom Gold Tree is married lives across the sea in a great fortress. And this may be akin to an otherworld location, commonly thought of as existing on some island across the sea, so that Snow White fleeing through the forest into the home of dwarves is different though identical in meaning to gold tree fleeing across the sea into the fortress of the prince in both cases her mother wants to kill her and eat various organs in both she is fooled by her mother and put into a death sleep which she is revived from by removing the source of the curse from her body in the grim tale, the theme is triplified in a very common way of folk tales. It also contains the archaism of the king having two wives, a clear continuation of a pagan theme, yet it may have a deeper meaning than polygamy. There is another Scottish folk tale which may have some similarity, though it is of Gaelic origin. 
that which is told of Angus and Bridje. Bridje is a servant of Queen Bera, the Queen of Winter, because she is jealous of her beauty. The story is directly tied to the changing of the seasons, and to my thinking, a number of elements about it seem the work of antiquarians rather than genuine folktale, but perhaps it is at least partly based on a genuine tradition. Now with this in mind, the double wife, or even the animosity between mother and daughter, may relate to an ancient tale of seasonal changes. There are also a number of similarities with the tale of Sigurd, the dragon slayer, and Sigurd Rifa. Like Snow White and the Gold Tree, Sigurd Rifa is put into a death sleep by a poke of a thorn, and kept in that state by skin-tight chainmail, akin to the bodice of Snow White, or the stab still lodged in the finger of Gold Tree. There are dwarves involved, as a serpent Fafnir was originally a dwarf. There is also a hint of a polygamous marriage with Sigurd, as a number of sources suggest that Brynhild is the same as Sigurd Rifa, and that Sigurd vows to marry her, but then weds Gudrun, yet helps Gunnar to wed Brynhild, by taking his shape and crossing the fire, which Gunnar is unable to do, thus making him actually the one who is eligible to marry her. However, there is also a significant difference, such that it's hard to say for sure that they were originally part of the same story. It seems more likely that both tales developed independently, possibly using some of the same source material. The story of Brunhild is intended to be based on a historical person, and so it's not at all unlikely that themes from an otherwise unrecorded myth were recycled for historical legend. With this in mind, it's likely that some common elements of the tale of Snow White existed within the Proto-Germanic community, and possibly even earlier. These common elements were borrowed into a number of later tales, and the basis of the original seems to have been about a goddess, possibly an earth goddess jealous of her daughter, connected perhaps to the fertile earth or spring who is destined to replace her. She gives birth, then grows to resent her, chases her into the underworld during the autumn. There was the sacrifice of a boar or other animal in order to fool the goddess, potentially connected with a seasonal ritual. The girl escapes into the underworld, but becomes trapped there in death, a state closely associated with sleep, a state which dwarves are intimately connected with in Norse mythology. A champion god must liberate her from the bindings of death which hold her frozen. Her revival and union then bring fruitfulness to the world, and her mother is destroyed, possibly driven into the underworld by the heat of spring, symbolized by the burning shoes. Now of course this is just a bit of speculation, but one thing is certain however. The story of Snow White is truly an ancient part of Germanic folklore and deserves to be treated with the same respect that Walt Disney treated it with. These are more than fictional stories. They are part of the invaluable cultural assets of Europe, held, cherished, and revered in their original state. I hope you liked the video. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe. And consider supporting me on Patreon, PayPal, or through YouTube Super Stickers. Don't forget to check me out on X or Facebook. And as always, stand tall.